three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32. Hello everybody, my name is Andrew, and welcome to my very first Kerbal Space Program video. I am Andrew the Astronaut, and today we're going to be building the Hubble Space Telescope. Now, I know the James Webb Telescope did launch like a, like a year ago, and NASA is calling it a successor or replacement of Hubble, but I still think that it's great to see how Hubble has turned out to be a major leap in humankind research. So, the Hubble Space Telescope was launched in the 1900s by the Space Shuttle, and you can see a picture that I just pulled out right here, and it was, it, it discovered so many new things, though there was one issue when it first launched. One of the mirrors was causing it to become blurry which means that well um the pictures would be way too blurry for the scientists to understand anything which means it was very expensive to make another space shuttle launch up there and fix the hubble space telescope now it, it would have taken years if the company that made the mirror that was broken didn't make a spare one if they hadn't made a spare one it probably would take another five years for them to finish so, yeah, currently I am designing the cover for the Hubble Space Telescope, which you can see just hanging out there, chilling. You okay there? Yeah, all good. So, yeah, this is my first Kerbal Space Program video. So, yeah, I have school. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, moving on to better things than schoolwork. Uh, I am currently adding the science equipment. This doesn't really matter. This isn't a science or career mode save. This is a sandbox save. Anyway, it, the Hubble Space Telescope was named after Erwin Hubble, which was a physicist. And, well, looks like I'm constructing the solar panels. And poor me had no idea what was going to happen if I arranged the solar panels in this way. <sighs> yep. If you've seen Matt Lyon's small station, it's small video, then you probably know what's going to happen with this layout because it it is bad. If you reload the craft, uh, you will not be, the solar panels will just tear apart into pieces. Insta-kraken is what Matt Lyon would say. And so that's why I'm not really going to recreate the issue of the mirror from Hubble Space Telescope. I mean, it's a, it's really cool, and I definitely recommend that you check out some videos about it. Primal Space has a great video on that. I'll link it in the description. So yeah, this is pretty much the Hubble Space Telescope done at this point. All I have to do is just close the bays and change a bit of the piston settings. I decided I'm going to add a servo to the edge so that I can turn it so that it can face towards the sun. It doesn't really matter. The solar panels on their own just face toward the sun. And even with that insta kraken, uh, I still have solar panels on the front, which I made for backup just in case it wouldn't work. Though I do think that this is a pretty accurate replica of the Hubble Space Telescope. Now the Hubble Space Telescope was launched on the space shuttle, which retired in 2011. So I decided I'm not really good at making space shuttles, and neither is it are they very fun to fly. So I decided I'm going to use an SLS, which is the newest lineup in NASA's monster rockets. And yeah, basically I'm going to use an SLS. I mean, if there was a Hubble Space Telescope 2.0, I mean, wait, didn't the James isn't the James Webb Space Telescope basically Hubble Space Telescope 2.0? Wow. Uh, Anyway, if they were going to make a Hubble Space Telescope 2.0, I I think it would be launched on an SLS and maybe launched on a Falcon Heavy, who knows. Uh, so yeah, basically. We're just making the SLS right now, and this is not an accurate representation. The second stage is one giant engine instead of the four or one small engines, so yeah. And 
you know, you can add decals onto the fairing so it makes it look much better. And here is the solid rocket boosters, which are, you know, they're pretty easy to construct, in fact. You just slap them on, move them down, add some nose cones, some separatrons, and that's it. Now, always remember to check your staging. I cannot stress this enough if you are building a crafting KSP. I have lost many missions because of it. Well, you may be wondering, why didn't I just quick save back? Well, because quick saves are not allowed. Anyway, this is the launch attempt. We have lifted off the pad in the KSC, and I opened up the maneuver node the maneuvering tab there it shows my apple apses so that i can see oh my apple apses is 150 kilometers okay time to shut off the engines and wait till apple apses and then start my circulation fern and i should have really checked the thrust to weight ratio on this thing it is insanely overpowered for this payload so yeah um Really, this is the third launch attempt of this rocket. The first launch attempt, uh, I was trying to get a cool shot of the payload fairing separating, and then the payload fairings collided with the main stage, which made it explode, which made me uh, revert to vehicle assembly. And I would auto strut them. I would have, but on the second launch attempt, I forgot to auto strut. And when I separated, it uh, kind of, yeah, kind of just died basically. So, first stage circularization burn is beginning. Now, the core stage won't really get us into orbit as much as I would like it to, because um, we NASA doesn't want to leave any debris up in orbit, especially something that massive. So, yeah, it may collide with the International Space Station, which would be not good. Not good. So, yeah, anyway, that core stage has stopped burning for now. It still has a bit of Delta V left, so I'm gonna wait. But first, uh, let's see. We're gonna coast our way up to our Apple Apsis and then begin our circularization burn. And there's that circularization burn. Okay, while we're burning this, I should also mention, again, I cannot really say this enough, but this is really not an accurate replica of the SLS. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of the SLS. I'm not a big orange rocket bad, silver rocket good kind of person. It is, it is what it is. Anyway, we have crossed over to second stage burn, and we are just about to finish circularizing. And we are circularized. I just made a quick maneuver note to change the orbit to be a little more equal, but then again, this stage still has a lot of delta V. P could probably take this thing out to the moon. Probably not in orbit though, maybe just a flyby. But we're gonna separate those payload fairings. Wow, they look majestic with those NASA decals. And we can decouple the Hubble Space Telescope. Now we're gonna extend the those arms and uh, extend all the solar panels. Now this was a pain to do. I really should have just made an action group for this and then film a cinematic shot of them all extending. Maybe I'll do that next video, which uh, I'm not gonna tell you what next video is because I don't have any idea either. Anyway, we are gonna finish extending these solar panels and then we're gonna do a nice cinematic uh, shot of the Hubble Space Telescope. But first we have to orient it in a good way. And also, reminds me, we're gonna have to turn this thing around and deploy that flap that's hiding the uh, infrared telescope, which again, does not work here because it needs to be in the sun-synchronous orbit. Not a sun-synchronous orbit, but an orbit around the sun. You cannot do that. I'm gonna open up that payload fairing. I know that isn't accurate, but it works. And that is our finished Hubble Space Telescope. Thank you everyone for watching. I'll see you next time. Signing off, I'm Andrew the Astronaut.